Pirji here and in this video we're going to talk about uh, design systems and I'm going to give you a live example of uh, a company that I'm working for and uh, we're setting up uh, the base structure for the design system which is going to expand uh, within the next uh, couple of months and years. Now the reason why you shouldn't focus heavily on design systems uh, with uh, all companies are essentially two. The main reason is that uh, different design systems make sense at different stages of the companies. So for example, when a company is a startup and you're just testing out uh, an idea, I personally wouldn't recommend spending too much time uh, on a design system. Maybe you want to just keep uh, all of the main elements in check, such as uh, the main typography styles and the color styles, but I wouldn't go crazy because you're in a stage where you, first of all, have to test your idea. And secondarily, you have to move fast and agile. And especially if you just have a, maybe one designer, which is very common at the start of a company, it doesn't make sense to spend a whole lot of time on the design system. But as the company grows and you start getting those initial rounds of funding or the uh, cash flow is really coming in, then you have to start planting seeds for the future and structuring the design system in a way which is going to help the company avoid issues such as not having brand consistency, not being able to scale the design projects in an effective way, especially when new team members are going to be brought on. So these are all very important considerations to keep in mind as you're creating a design system and thinking about this. So at this point, uh, what we are doing in practicality is we're setting up uh, the stage for all of the months and years to come. So we're starting uh, with uh, all of the basics. So for example, over here, we're going, we already have uh, the color styles set up from all of the previous projects. So when it comes to the color styles, I always like to start with uh, the basic uh, uh, brand colors. Then uh, some neutral colors, which uh, are going to be the grays uh, in this uh, instance, and uh, also the UI states, so states that are going to help you recognize what a success state looks like, what a, a error state, warning state, so on and so forth. You could also add uh, things like uh, the shadows in, uh, in this mix, so that the shadows are always consistent. And um, things like that are just going to naturally integrate and be added within the design system. Now, another really important element, uh, and uh, by the way, this design system is not only for us designers, but it's also for developers and uh, also external team members, which might be marketing or even stakeholders. So uh, you want to make it clear and uh, uh, especially the more you're going to show this to external team members, the more maybe like notes and uh, kind, kind of a guided experience you want to give. So in this case, we're keeping it pretty practical because uh, we're still moving fast uh, and we just want to have a skeleton structure that then we can expand and add upon the future. So in this case, uh, we also added here the main fonts which we're using, which uh, in this case is uh, Proxima Nova. And then we're going to have uh, all sorts of different uh, element uh, uh, and uh, basically the body and uh, miscellaneous text that we're going to have in the website. And uh, of course, uh, also all the headings. So this covers from the H1s to the H6 of the website and also some uh, uh, particular uh, type of uh, text. And on top of that, uh, what uh, we are setting up, um, this is still a work in progress. So I'm literally showing, showing you this uh, as I'm working on, uh, on, on this project, uh, on this design system, is uh, we want to have a, a basic uh, uh, layout template for the desktop, uh, tablet, and mobile versions. So we're going to have grids. We're going to basically uh, work with the developers to understand what is the ideal um, grid system and the layout that we should have in our files in Figma so that it can match as closely as possible to their uh, running operation from the development point of view because they're using bootstrap so there's all sorts of uh, 
um, elements which can be pre-configured to make their lives easier. So that's always important to set up, especially um, having a call. So for example, in this case, I have calls with, uh, with the developers. Um, they're a great team. Uh, we are, we're having like back and forth ideas on, on this. Uh, and uh, it's useful to establish it once uh, so that uh, then you can move on and focus on uh, the actual work. And then as uh, things grow, you can uh, eventually grow your design system to be something around these lines. Like, uh, uh, for example, in this case, we're uh, seeing uh, Uber's design system. So as you can see, it's very um, complex. There's a lot of variables. There's a lot going on in uh, this design system, but this wasn't built in a day. And there's also a specific reason why this uh, design system is uh, as a uh, complex as it is. And I worked on uh, several of the of, uh, design systems uh, which have been uh, uh, that complex for companies with thousands of employees. Uh, and um, mainly the reason is that uh, you have to keep track uh, of everything at scale. And uh, you're not dealing with just one designer. You're, de you're dealing potentially with, with uh, design teams which are spread all over the globe. So you always want to have one point of reference in order to keep the consistency and uh, especially when you are, when you want to make uh, a um, a big change within the company such as a redesign having a design system like this enables you to have uh, really high levels of uh, scalability and uh, and be able to adapt but of course it comes at the cost uh, of uh, uh, the initial implementation and uh, management of this design system within uh, the design system itself and also all the files associated to it. But it's definitely a great uh, investment, but it makes sense at that specific point. So really hope this video was helpful. If you need help with uh, anything related to design systems or Figma, feel free to get in touch with me and I'll see you in the very next video.